Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gaming Zeta.com video. Welcome to the graphical preview of Alien Isolation on the Xbox One versus the PlayStation 4. We will, of course, be covering it versus the PC as well as a frame rate analysis over the next few days. Apologies for the vocal quality in this particular video. Still having a few issues with our audio capturing at the moment, which will be resolved in the next day or two. We have the equipment on order. Um, so... I'll say this right off the get-go. If you're thinking about buying it either on the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, or if you've only got one particular platform, both versions do stack up in terms of graphics very, very closely with one another. There are a few lighting differences, but primarily this isn't so much of a big deal. You will notice a fairly odd thing fairly early on in this um, comparison, and that is actually one of the characters has very different looking clothing and it's actually just to do with the lighting and the ambience and it actually makes quite a lot of difference. There is post-process anti-aliasing that's going on. I'm not exactly certain which type it is. I'm going to try and figure that out over the next few days but both images appear to be a 1080p. Early indications are that the PlayStation 4 version while it's very similar in graphics to the Xbox One, it does have a more stable frame rate. In other words, the Xbox One version occasionally did feel a little jerkier. But that's, as I said, something that we will explore over the next few days. With all of that said, I have to confess that I'm very impressed with both versions of the title. I have to say that it looks very beautiful indeed. The title offers multiple light sourcing and indeed at some point, for example, when you're crawling through vents and, say, smoke or steam arises, you can definitely see that it's quite dynamic and does, for the most part, encapsulate and emulate what's going on in both the environment surrounding it as well as in real life. I have noticed the odd graphical defect here and there in both versions of the game. Specifically, for example, in one area you'll notice a slight difference in level of detail at distances from certain objects. Now, this isn't particularly noticeable if you're not looking for it. In other words, it's not going to be like certain games where there's very obviously huge level of detail differences. For example, Last of Us on the PlayStation 3 really suffered from this. This isn't a case like that. Um, you're going to notice it on sometimes miscellaneous artifacts and objects for example let's say surgical implements and so on that are on the counter you might see a little bit of uh, additional say lighting pop onto them or an additional uh, level of texture detail but the most important thing and if you're considering buying the xbox one version of the game you're just wondering hey how does it stack up the good news is pretty damn well the most important part here is that it does overall capture a very very similar looking feel to the PlayStation 4 version and for the most part I would argue that 90% plus of people who were just given a blind image sample and asked to point they would basically be guessing. They wouldn't be able to make a judgment call of is this the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. I will say that it does also stack up fairly well against the PC version, I will be covering that as well. Um, but the PC version does obviously run at a considerably higher frame rate and has FOV changes um, and so on and so forth. The PC version is an extremely good port as well, despite the fact there are a few oddities regarding FOV sliders. But aside from that, I've not really experienced any major problems with the PC version. Just putting it into this video just in case you're curious. Overall, I'm really enjoying the game so far. I'm still fairly early, which is another reason I've not done the full analysis. I want to get quite far into both versions, specifically when there's a lot of combat. But early indications for both titles are good, and frame rate for the most part seems solid with the odd dip here and there, particularly on the Xbox One. But it, so far, from what I'm finding, isn't anything to write home about. It's not awful. Anyway, as I said, there will be more on this in the next day or two. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.